Are black people allowed to defend themselves? Not even allowed to walk away? Could these three steps change things? Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Join us before the hour, Kenyatta in Los Angeles. Hey, Kenyatta, what's on your mind today? Well, what's on my mind today, Tom, is uh, the uh, attempted assassination of Mr. Blake. You're probably not surprised mm -hmm. at that. And you know that uh, I have been on both sides of the handcuffs. I've been the placey and the placeor. And I can tell mm -hmm. you that, and I've mentioned this to you over the years, that uh, uh, unfortunately the police craft in this country is inherently racist. From the referring to the cars as black and whites to the black silhouette targets with the black image and the white background. It's all programming. But, you know, I wanted to ask you a question, and I'm, I'm not asking it in a confrontational or controversial way, though it may end up that way. But I do know that your audience is mainly a liberal white audience. And here's my question. Under what circumstance does, for lack of a better term, white America feel that black people in America, uh, under what circumstances uh, should we be able to defend ourselves? Because we certainly can't call the police. That's like calling internal affairs. That's just cops protecting cops. At what point? And I'm not being, like I said, I, I just want to, because it's, at what point? Because I cannot imagine, Tom, I cannot imagine, and I'm sure you've seen the video of what happened to Mr. Blake, and of course you've seen what happened to Mr. Floyd and Tamir Rice and over and over again. I cannot imagine these things happening in reverse, black officers doing this to white people. I cannot imagine white people in America, European Americans, uh, sitting idly by. I, you know, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong. No, I think, I, you know, you make an excellent point, and, and the... the the, the larger point beyond, um, you know, the obvious racism in our society and the obvious racism that comes into policing is what's it going to take for us to have police forces that are not running this, this racist, uh, you know, slave patrol routine? And, you know, I, I honestly don't know the answer to that question, Kenyatta. I, you know, I, obviously a lot of racial diversity in our police departments a lot of, uh, you know, across the board in police departments across the United States, putting people of color, particularly black people, in charge of them would be a good idea. Although we've seen police departments that are run by black people that have, you know, substantial numbers of black people on the forces that still engage in violence against black people. And, and occasionally white people, presumably, but, but, you know, in particular against black people. And I think that that's more of a, you know, that's not so much racially motivated as it is probably class or just the idea that, hey, you know, we've got the blue uniforms, we've got the guns, we're the, we're the, we're the, we're the, the tough guys here, don't mess with us. I mean, there's a, there's a mentality associated with policing in the United States that you, by and large, don't see in a lot of other countries. And, uh, uh, you know, I, Louise and I have been watching this uh, 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 crime series on, uh, fr uh, from BBC. It's called Silent Witness. And, uh, you know, every week they're confronting a serial killer or something like that. And nobody ever has guns out. And, th and the cops aren't showing up like a SWAT team. Uh, you know, uh, we have this idea of policing in the United States that is purely violence-based. And, and it's, it's bizarre and dysfunctional and destructive. And when you add you know, the toxic racism that is part of our society to it, you've got what we have right now. But we've got to rebuild our policing from the bottom up with a different understanding of what being a, pol being a cop means. Have I, have I even begun to answer your, your, what I think was probably a rhetorical question? No, no, you, you, you as usual, uh, you know, you, you are the man. I mean, uh, and you're so honest, and, that, and I appreciate that. I do want to say this to you. I know that I sent you some information uh, about uh, the SWAT mafia on LAPD. You've got one of the LAPD yeah. SWAT officers that has gone and has, by the way, has had to go undercover with, with all types of body coverage because he told about this culture of violence. It's the culture of the craft. And I want to tell you something, Tom, that a lot of black people won't say, but I will. A black police officer is a black man's worst nightmare. Don't get it twisted. I've got three things I want to say about police reform. I talked to you about this before. I was upset, not upset, but I was disappointed that the Democrats 
uh, during their convention didn't really zero in on this directly. And now we see it rear its ugly head again. There are three things that weren't in the Police Reform Act, uh, uh, Tom, that, that we can do to do exactly what you said, change the culture. One is body cams, unless that officer is code seven, that means at lunch or using the bathroom, if that officer is on active duty, if he's not out of service, that body cam ought to be on and upload it to a live server for everyone to see. They're public servants. Why are they hiding, number one? Number two, something that police unions have vehemently opposed, and that is drug testing for its members. Are you kidding? Every time one of these you know, young black men or women, we found drugs in their system. No one ever tests the cops. And finally, the third rail would be to stop them, again, with the mentality, the reform part of it. Stop recall calling it a police force. But you are a peace officer. See, see, as a man thinks, mm-hmm. so he is. Thank you for the time, Tom. Change, change the language around it. Yeah, Kenya, I, I think those are all brilliant ideas and they would address the culture of policing. I think that, that I would add to it that, um, you know, again, it, 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 have you seen Michael Moore's movie, Where to Invade Next? Absolutely. Excellent film. Yeah, so, so you know the part about the Norwegian jails. Um, you know, just this, this, the whole idea of why we police, the whole idea of why we have jails, you know, is it for punishment or is it for rehabilitation? Is our goal to bring people back into society, help them heal and, and become functional members of society? Or is our goal to segregate them from society for the rest of their lives? We have fallen in the, in that latter response is, you know, we, our goal is to, is to keep people separate from the rest of the, of the country, uh, essentially forever, or punish them so badly that they're broken. And the, yep. I don't think any other developed country in the world does that. I, you know, I think the, the third world countries do that. I think that's how Turkey polices and Egypt polices, but that's certainly not how Germany policed when I lived there. So, you know, that yep. I, I see, you know, the, the things you proposed, I think, are brilliant. And, 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 and I think that we need to even go beyond that. <laughs>